This video contains a six minute compilation taken from the Coming of a New Order movie, which has a runtime of 21 minutes. The Aboriginal people of Western Australia's Kimberley District have a profound connection to the land. They are of the land, physically and spiritually. 120 short years ago, over 30 tribes or language groups of Aboriginal people were spread throughout the Kimberley's vast interior. They lived much as they had for the previous 50 to 60,000 years, in harmony with the land. It was part of them, and they were part of it. The people of each tribe spoke their own language and lived within clearly defined boundaries that had been set out in ancestral times. They had their own spiritual beliefs or dreamings that were passed down through the ages by tribal elders in stories of the dream time and illustrated in paintings on the rock faces and cave walls of their land. The tribes were made up of strong family groups or clans each with their own traditional stories covering knowledge, law and social behaviour that were passed down from generation to generation. As well as being one of the first areas of the Australian continent settled by ancient Aboriginal people, the Kimberley was also to become one of the last areas of productive land in Australia where Indigenous people lived in their traditional manner, free from the influence of European settlement. The coming of a new order explains how the great gold rush of the 1850s sparked a period of rapid European growth and expansion in Australia, and how the population boom created a huge demand for new farming and grazing land to feed the growing population resulting in large, well-organised expeditions being launched into Australia's mysterious interior, searching for new, productive land. We are told of Alexander Forrest's 1879 expedition into the Kimberley and how his favourable report started a rush by European miners and pastoralists to take up the land. We learn how the Aboriginal people reacted to the intrusion on their land and how any resistance by the Indigenous people was met by violence from the Europeans. The pastoralists discovered that, in addition to the Aboriginal people's land, they also needed their labour and the ways that they went about obtaining it. The system of the Indigenous people allowing stock onto their land in return for a steady supply of meat, and why it was accepted by some and rejected by others. The indigenous people's tradition of sharing also created problems as they had no concept of the European idea of property ownership. In their view, what was on the land, old or new, was not exclusive property, but a resource equally available to all. To the Aboriginal, the cattle and sheep were of the land. They ate the same grass and drank from the same water holes as their traditional game which to some extent were displaced or reduced in numbers by the pressure of large herds of cattle and sheep on their grazing land. However, when the indigenous people began spearing the stockmen's livestock, either for food or in an effort to remove them from the land, violence erupted. Aboriginals were shot and killed and stockmen speared in a bloody feud that saw many Aboriginal families driven from their land or in some cases wiped out. In some instances, entire clans suffered horrible deaths when pastoralists gave them food laced with poison or poisoned the water holes from which they drank. European diseases like smallpox, typhoid, influenza and leprosy also ravaged the indigenous people, with many even dying from the effects of the common cold to which they had no natural resistance. Although there was a small force of government police in the district, they were greatly influenced by strong political pressure from the pastoralists, who demanded protection for themselves and their livestock. 
The police were also given the responsibility of protector of Aborigines, which meant that they were to ensure the indigenous people were treated fairly in any disputes that arose. However, although it was the Aboriginals' traditional land that was being taken, and for the most part who were being slaughtered, it was the protection of the pastoralist livestock that received the most attention. With the assistance of black trackers, the police hunted down those Aboriginals who were accused of killing livestock, then locked them in neck chains and walked them to the nearest courthouse. There, because of their differing views on property ownership, they were tried for a crime that they often didn't comprehend in a language they couldn't understand. When found guilty, they were either sent to prison and forced labour in the coastal towns of the Kimberley, or shipped thousands of kilometres away to Rottnest Island Prison off the coast of Perth. Many never returned to their native land. Oh, my God.